The long-awaited return to Hogwarts is not far off now, with Portkey Games' brand new open-world RPG. It's time to dive into everything we know so far about Hogwarts Legacy. First up, I'd like to talk about the setting of this game. Hogwarts Legacy is going to be set in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, however, the story takes place in the late 1800s, long before even Harry's parents were born. As the name suggests, it will take place in Hogwarts Castle and Grounds, however they have mentioned there being many other iconic places to visit, and even some new, never before seen places to explore. Hogsmeade, Forbidden Forest, and what's beyond the Black Lake are some of the areas that have been revealed to be places we can visit, and they all look so amazing. I like how they've tried to create this world so it looks like the films did. There are to be little hamlets all over the countryside, so I really wonder how big this world is going to be. I mean, look at this map. It looks like it will be pretty decent. I'm excited to explore everything we've never been able to see before. The developers mentioned seeing things from the films and books you will recognize, and I just think that's exactly the direction they should have taken. And they did. So looking at the castle and the grounds itself, it just looks fantastic. Looks like a faithful recreation of the castle we all know and love. But we will now be able to explore many places we've never been able to, or see exactly how we get from one place to another within the castle. Portkey Games has released tours of all the common rooms, and I have to say this is where I really started to get hyped for this game. The attention to detail in these common rooms is breathtaking, and they feel like I would imagine these spaces to be. Gryffindor's looks comfy and relaxing, Ravenclaw looks like a perfect place to study, Slytherin's all sleek and menacing, and Hufflepuff just looks like an amazing place to hang out. Check out the links in the description for the full common room tours. Another cool feature of this open world is the dynamic seasons and climates that will change throughout the year. In Hogwarts Legacy, you will play as a new student starting at Hogwarts in your fifth year, which is already a mysterious starting point. I think there will be an interesting reason as to why that we will discover throughout the game. It is an original story where your character has a unique power to sense and possibly wield or control ancient magic. The story will revolve around finding out why this ancient magic is returning and who is behind it. They have also mentioned something about a goblin rebellion, which we will have to dig deeper into when the game releases. You get to attend classes such as charms, defense against the dark arts, herbology, and potions. I really hope Professor Benz is teaching history. He was teaching before he died in around 1890 and then continued to teach while he was a ghost, so maybe we get to see him alive and then as a ghost. Who knows? That's really all we know about the story apart from the fact that there will be choices that allow you to create your own legacy. Whatever that turns out to mean. I'm not sure, but I'm super excited about it. Hogwarts Legacy has a character creator screen where you can design your perfect witch or wizard. You can then also choose your house and wand. You can even link your Wizarding World account where you can take a test to see what house you are and what wand you would have. You can choose to use this given house or wand, or you could choose your own in the game. You will then be able to explore your house common room, and like I said before, these look brilliant. Your character will be able to learn and cast spells, grow plants and brew potions in order to create your own unique playstyle. As you start in your fifth year, you will have some catching up to do, but I am sure you will quickly learn a variety of skills to accomplish your tasks. You will have some kind of upgrading system that has talents and skills that can be used to enhance abilities, spells, and potions. The options on the upgrade screen seem to be the Room of Requirement, which we will talk about soon, Stealth, Core, and two other categories that they didn't tell us much about other than the picture. So maybe you can have a guess down in the comment section about what these two on the left are. There also appears to be two other menus called Traits and Appearance, which will be very interesting as well. As you can see, there will be many different appearance options for your character, which I think is pretty cool. You can make many friends at Hogwarts, and a few of them have already been revealed. Natsai Onai, I apologize for my pronunciation, a Gryffindor driven by justice, Sebastian Sallow, an unafraid Slytherin, and Poppy Sweeting, a kind Hufflepuff who prefers the company of creatures. Me too, Poppy. Me too. I wonder who will be the Ravenclaw one, as I'm guessing there will be one for each house. There appears to be a whole host of other awesome new characters like Professor Fig, and old ones such as Nearly Headless Nick. There is also an awesome little house elf called Deke who seems to help us out too. So let's get down to the gameplay of this magical game. As I said earlier, we can attend classes where we can learn spells and other magical abilities. We will take part in battles where there will be an emphasis on taking down dark wizards, goblins, and magical creatures that all have unique fighting styles. We can use blocking spells to block both ranged and melee attacks, and use a variety of spells, plants, and potions to take down our enemies. It seems like there is a wide range of ways to complete these battles, either in stealth, with a run-and-gun fighting style, or even an army of plants. Never would be proud. 
Now if you've read the books or watched the Harry Potter films, you'll be familiar with the Room of Requirement. The Room of Requirement is a space that transforms to suit a person's needs. In our character's case, that is to catch up to the other students in their fifth year. The room will allow you to sow and harvest plants, brew potions and upgrade your gear. The House Elf Deke will also help us discover a way to look after magical beasts in these vivariums. This space seems like a wide open area where you will be able to customise the space to your liking and needs. And I really want this cat, like oh my god look at him, he's such a good boy. Hogwarts will contain many more secrets to discover including many puzzles, dungeons and vaults. These dungeons and vaults are said to contain untold rewards. This all appears to be unique and challenging, something I'm very much looking forward to. Outside the castle you will be able to ride your broom or other mounts to navigate the rest of the open world. You can travel to Hogsmeade to buy supplies or go further into the unknown. It seems as though there is some kind of dark, light wizard choices that you can make throughout the game, but they have stated that there is no morality system, so we'll have to see how this one pans out once it releases. Now there is one downside to all this, one small problem, and that is, there is no Quidditch in this game. But I suppose it makes a lot of sense. I'm not too bothered about this, and the more I think about it, the more okay I am with it. I think the game is going to be so full of things to do once we start playing, we won't miss Quidditch at all. So now into the details. The current release date is February 10, 2023. Hogwarts Legacy will release on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PC. However, PlayStation has a timed exclusive that will be an additional dungeon with the option to own a store in Hogsmeade and an extra cosmetic set. I must say I am a PlayStation owner, but I hate these things. Why should people miss out on this stuff because they own different hardware? Anyway, my gripes aside, this will release for other platforms an entire year after launch. There are three versions of the game, the Standard Edition, the Deluxe Edition, or the Collector's Edition. Pre-order bonus for all editions is the Onyx Hippogriff mount. Deluxe Edition includes 72 hour early access and a Dark Arts pack. The Collector's Edition contains all of the Deluxe features plus a magic book with a floating wand, a steel case, Collector's Edition box, Kelpie robe and a Dark Arts garrison hat. Now something we should all be very very happy about is that according to the devs and their frequently asked questions page, this game does not contain microtransactions. So let's hope they stick with this. This means the game won't be built around selling them which is a huge breath of fresh air. Well there you have it, everything we know so far about Hogwarts Legacy. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful please hit that like button and subscribe for more gaming content. If you want to support my channel more directly you can click on the thanks button below the video and I will be making more in-depth videos on Hogwarts Legacy so stay tuned and check out some of my other content here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Sticks out.